Hi, welcome back to the channel. This is the first in hopefully an ongoing series of where I paint up the Warhammer's Miniature of the Month, the one that they give out free at the start of each month, um, just to do something different and give you guys a bit of a, um, a start onto new minis and new techniques, possibly new armies. Um, yeah, this month, January of 2024, we have the Felgor Ravager. So, starting in January, we're going to start painting up Miniature of the Month. I'm going to try and do this every month. Um, this time we have uh, the Beastman. Uh, are they called the Ravagers? Beast Gore Ravagers from uh, 40k. Um, yeah, got him built, got him primed with Grease here. Um, let's make a start on him. First thing I'm going to do is go over all the flesh and the uh, fur with Fire Slayer flesh. And quick shake up. We don't want this pooling anywhere. We want this nice even coat across the whole of the, the model. Let's start, let's start here. Now, with these, you have to build them in store. Um, so I generally build them fairly quickly. Um, so there might be some mold lines, there might be some sprue cuts. That's not the neatest, but they don't intend to get lots of uh, display. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be display kind of um, paint job on it. It's going to be a quick paint job for you guys to get on the tabletop fairly quickly. Nice, even coat across the whole model. If you do go across any of the bits, like your wrappings or the... Uh, armor or anything like that then don't worry too much it's not the end of the world we can tidy that up either with some gray seer or depending on what color is going over the top of it so now the skin is dry mostly uh, we're going to go over all the fur, all the patches of fur, head, goatee, beard, whatever you want to call it, on the top of the legs, the top of the hooves, and anywhere else there might be on your model, um, with Gore Grunter fur. Give that a quick shake. This one you want to be a little bit neater, you don't want to try and get it on the, um, the skin that you've just painted. So we're going to start on this leg. Got a bit of a hole there actually. Got to paint around that. <laughs> Imagine that's hole that hole is like a a bullet wound or a bolt around bit no uh, um, some sort of pustule maybe, not really sure. Get up here as well, all the way up to the face, just below the ears. I'm going 
to the head, I'm going to start where I want it to start and then draw back a bit like that. I'm going to hit these couple of bits here as well. I don't think I've got the horns quite seated properly when I built the model. That's okay. Let me make sure we get paint in there instead, like that. While there we go, while the uh, fur is drying, we can work on some metallics. So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go with lead belcher and go over everything that we want silver. I think with this, the uh, simpler the better, to be honest. So the majority of this is going to be silver. Um, start with a pistol. We've got a bit of wrapping on there, so I'm going to leave that. I'm also going to leave the casing at the top there. Just get this magazine bit down here. Get the muzzle. Is that the muzzle? Barrel? The bit that the bullet comes out of. That bit. Handle. We've got a couple of grenades knocking around as well, so uh, I'm going to pick them out. I've got loads of paint on my brush while it's going on. Pick them out carefully. Careful not to get it on anywhere else that's already been painted. assume these are grenades. It certainly look like grenades to me. Uh, of course we've got the shoulder pads. Uh, what else we got going on here? Oh, we got the uh, the gut plate. I'm actually going to do the gut plate in a bronze, but we'll do it with silver. I'll, I'll show you a different way of doing it. Okay. Uh, do I want the whole thing? Yeah, why not? barbed wire at the top here we is it like a it looks like a pipe of some sort that he's put a bit of wrapping around so we'll get most of that with silver over shoulder pad and everything so go around the whole model picking out the bits that you want silver and we'll be back in a minute so that is everything gone over with the lead belcher that we want silver um i've also gone around with some grace here out the pot and just tidied up all the, the straps and all the cloth and the horns, anything that we don't want paint on at this minute and we want it to be uh, back to the base coat. Um, we're going to take some wildwood now and we're going to hit all the leather straps or the strapping across him. He's got a belt, he's got straps holding on his shoulder plates and things like that. So that's what we're going to do with this. That's part of the reason why we did the tidy up before. So we got a good 
solid base coat to go off with this. I'm going to start with the belt down here. Careful not to get it on the bits that you don't want it. Try, I, what I tend to do is pick a strap and follow it around so you don't tend to miss the bits there. Because inevitably you're going to miss a bit. Now, before I do that bit, there is a strap at the top here. Now, to save time, you could paint that the same as the cloth, this bit of cloth here, and nobody would know any difference. It's one of them things is look good if you do it, nobody's going to know if you don't. All right, so while that bit is drying. I'm going to put that away and we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red. Take some Flesh Terrors Red. This is going to be for all our tabards, all our army colours basically. If your Chaos uh, Warband runs around wearing yellow, then do this yellow. But mine are going to be wearing red. So I'm going to get all the tabards, all the bits of cloth with red. I feel it ties in nicely with the orange of the fur and the ruddiness of the skin tone. But it stands out enough to be different. Be very careful not to get this on any of the bits you've already painted. Also going to paint this um, a little bit of armour here. Just going to go over the whole thing. I've already painted the silver. I'm just going to go over the whole thing with flesh terrors. said if you have already painted that strap brown brilliant if you haven't now's the time to do it hit it with a red or the color of your choice painting these similar to uh, Cadians would be quite cool it's almost like the, uh, the power of chaos have warm, warped the uh, Cadian soldiers into beastmen. I don't know if it's part of the law, but I quite like that idea. I've missed a bit of his belly there. I'm going to leave that. And 
now we get come back with the flyer slayer. Once this red has dried. Because if I try and do it now, they're just going to bleed into one another. It'll be alright less. Um also wanted to paint the casing on the gun. I can't tell what that is there. That's the edge of the casing there, it's okay. Couldn't tell if it was a strap. A bit of casing. Now that I've painted it is a strap. That's fine. We can tidy that up with some grace here. Uh, what are we going to do next? We're going to do strapping around his arms, horns, teeth, um, what are these things called? Hooves. We're going to do that in Agros jeans. Give it a quick shank. I say teeth and horns, I haven't undercoated them yet, so we'll leave the teeth and the claws. Teeth and claws, that's what I mean. So we're going to start with the hooves, just a nice coat across them. Also uh, got the rock to do, but I'm not going to do that with Agrax uh, strapping. Something like that. I feel this is slightly better at doing like dirty bandages and stuff than um, skeleton hoard. Just slightly darker gives a better appearance in my opinion. I assume that's some sort of horn. We'll get it there. Can't go wrong then, can we? So now that is drying, we're going to tackle the pouches. We've got the gun holster gun holster and this little pouch on the side here um i've also tidied up this strap in this here on the end of the gun as well i'm going to let that dry and then we'll go over that with the uh agros dunes like we have with the rest so let's take some concentrate there we go snake bite leather and we're just gonna go over the pouches Start with this little one. We could do these in wildwood as well to match with the, the leather on the belt, but I want it a little bit different. Like it into all them points on that star. I don't want any uh, bubbles. Because if the bubble dries, it will 
and leave a white spot. Careful as we can get the inside of it where we can. Not to worry too much. I'm going to dob a bit more in there just to let it pull in that little bit of a recess because that's going to be hollow, isn't it? And it's going to be a natural shadow in there. All right, uh, right. We got that grenade on the front there. Now I was thinking about this earlier. I think a nice Creed camo would work well on that for the grenade itself. So we give that a quick shake up. Get some on our brush. And yeah, nice bit of Creed camo straight on that. Wonderful. And we got the rock as well. Mentioned that earlier and then I forgot about it. Let's do this standard on that, I think. And we'll take some uh, basilicon grey. Give it a good shake because it hasn't been used in a while. And we'll uh, go over that rock. Do we want basilicon and grey? Mm. Yeah, why not? Careful not to get it on the hooves. There we go. There we go. Now, the breastplate. Now, I said we'd be doing this gold. So let's do this gold. We're going to do it a little bit different to standard, though. If I can find that paint. So, the breastplate. We are going to take some seraphim sepia and we're going to wash over this plate. This might take several coats with um, drying time in the middle. But you can see straight away the sort of effect we're going to get. It's going to give you a nice brassy, tarnished, bronze look. And it's going to take a couple of layers to build up. What you don't want to do is go in thick because it won't work right. It will pull and it will just be blotchy and horrible. So we got the first coat on. We'll let that dry and then come back in a minute. So it's taken three coats of the seraphim sepia to get it to this stage. Uh, I'm quite happy with it like that. You can either do more or less, entirely up to you, how you want it looking. But now that's all dry, um, we're going to go over the whole model with Agrax Earthshade. The whole thing, top to toe, with Agrax. Now, we don't want a lot of this. We don't want it to pull in places. I've been wondering why I've been struggling to pick things up. It's because I haven't got my painting handle. So, yes, we don't want this to pull. We just want a nice 
even coat all across the whole model. So we'll start at the top and work our way down and we'll just put it on and spread it about a bit. We don't want any weird pulling about anywhere. We don't need any of that. So just keep an eye on it. Don't put too much on at once and go over the whole thing. So now that the Agrax Earthshade has dried up nicely, what we're going to do is we're going to take a big dry brush. I've got a big old makeup brush here. It's nice and soft bristles. And we're going to take some Morgast, Morgast? Morgast bone. So any kind of bone colour will do really, because we're going to lightly dry brush this on. <clears throat> take a bit of tissue paper. Get a little bit on your brush, load your brush up, get it in there. And then we're going to wipe off the excess, work it into the bristles. And then you want to barely see, I don't know if you can see that, you can barely just see the paint coming off. See slight colour variation here compared to over here. If I do it there, it's just coming off. And then you can take this and we're going to go over the whole thing basically. I'm going to try and leave the metallics, but if we catch it, it's not the end of the world. You can see there, it's just lightly coming off. That's exactly what we want. It might be a bit too heavy. Obviously, can't avoid all the metallics here, but we're not actively going after them, like the breastplate in the middle there. Not actively getting that. If we go over it a bit, it's not the end of the world. Same with the uh, shoulder plates. And the uh, end of this club as well. And that kind of ties it all together. Kind of want a little bit in there on the main. That's a bit better. Obviously the face is the focal point, so get a little bit more on there if you want and highlight that up a bit. You see there is snout is quite um, heavily dry brushed, which is fine.
there we go wash that off um, right now we are going to take a slightly smaller dry brush if I can find it that's right next to me so now we're going to take a slightly smaller dry brush this sort of size again it's an old makeup brush um, this one's been heavily used I've had to glue it back together just cheap nasty ones from Amazon but it's nice soft bristles again I'm going to take some lead belcher and we're going to touch up them uh, metallic areas a little bit same process as before just a bit on your brush take some tissue roll tissue paper work it into the bristles and we don't want anything coming off of this now so you can see already it's pretty good there so what I'm going to do is going to go over this breastplate just catch the edges with it like that top of this the gun even including the red bit on this because it's still going to be metallic careful not to get it on anything else because we don't want his skin giving that metallic sort of edge so just do that shoulder pads Um, and then there's this piece here, what to do. And what I am actually going to do with that is just take a tiny bit of lead voucher on the tip of my paintbrush. So if you preferred, you could do it this way anyway. It takes a little bit more effort. And just go around giving a chipped kind of effect, basically edge highlighting it. A couple of bits in the middle, like that. If you wanted to, you could go around these bits, pick out the edges a bit more, make them a bit more defined. Just on the grenades, Um, yeah, define the edges here, define the edges here, here, wherever you want, you can put this little highlight just to reinforce your uh, dry brushing. So a couple of little things that we're going to do. We're going to take some, <clears throat> a couple of little things to finish off. We're going to take some Volopus pink. And we are going to dot his nose, basically. Don't want a lot of this. Just a little bit. And we're going to get the end of his nose, basically where it's been dry brushed. And we're going to paint that pink. In a little bit of a love heart sort of shape same as any other animal's nose you could do that or you could leave it as it is entirely up to you and whilst I've got this out I am going to take some and I'm just gonna get his eye He hasn't actually got an eyeball in that one, just that one eye. Uh, what else was we going to do? Uh, <clears throat> basing it, that's what we was going to do. So for basing, you can obviously base this however you wish in your desired theme. Um, what I'm going to do is take some of this earth texture from Vallejo, um, the desert sand one, well, not used it before so this could be interesting. 
Ooh. Okay, and it's very much like the uh, texture paste. Similar sort of texture, look. it's just yellowy, gritty paint, which is fine, which is kind of what I expected. So I'm going to take some of this, and the same as Games Workshop's uh, texture paint, I'm just going to spread it around. Now that our basing material is dry, I'm going to take some Reichland Flesh, Reichland Flesh Shade and I'm just going to go over the top of that uh, and get a bit, a bit of shading on it. I've gone over the hooves a little as well, um, just because it, it, they're walking in the sand, I thought it would make sense to have them a bit dusty from that. Obviously with the shade, try not to get it on the model too much. If it goes on the hooves where the sand is, then it's okay. I know this completely changes the look of it, but once it dries, it won't be so bad. Once we hit it with dry brush, it'll be even better. All right, got that on there, let that dry. Be back in a minute. So now that our Reichland Flesh Shade has dried, we're gonna take some Morgas Bone and we're just gonna dry brush it across the top of the base. Same as process as before, get a bit on your brush. Wipe off the excess. And we're just gonna go over the top, get the rock as well. Build it up till you've got a nice colour. Make it a little bit heavier. It's only a tiny little brush this one, so it doesn't hold much paint. So build that up so when you're happy. Once you've done that to your desired effect, you can rim the base with the preferred color. I am going to use the uh, Steel Legion drap here. Let's get some on your brush and carefully like that all the way around. You might take a couple of coats. In fact, you're probably better off doing a couple of coats and get a nice, good, even coverage. So here we have our completed model. Um, yeah, it's just a quick, easy, get it on the tabletop job. Um, if you've got a whole unit of these and you're batch painting them, it's a nice, quick, easy way to do it. If you've got characters, then by all means, take a bit more time to do it. A um, Couple of things I would have probably done different. I probably would have done the fur, maybe like a black. So I would have done the skin dry brushed the uh, Morgas bone over it just to get them highlights going on. And then with the fur, I would have maybe done like a um, a black Templar and then maybe like a, a Codex gray or maybe, maybe even a Fortress gray dry brush over the top of that. Um, but everything else I would have done the same really. They're the only two 
changes, maybe pick out some of the scars. Um, but yeah, enjoyed this one. I uh, look forward to next month with it. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you again next time. Goodbye.